Say that again. Hey, good evening, everybody. I, I do not own the rights to the music, but that is Todd Galbraith. Uh, Galbraith, I don't, Galbraith, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he's singing about the blood of Jesus. And I'm telling you, and getting ready for tonight's service, <clears throat> it has got me into this place today. And I just tell you, um, I thank God for his, for his righteousness. Amen. Because our righteousness is as filthy rags, but his is there, man. And that blood, <clears throat> it will never lose its power. You just, you, you just don't know. If you ever in that place, uh, I'm going to tell you, look him up. Todd, G-A-L-B-E-R-T-H. Look him up on YouTube. And it's the blood medley. I'm telling you, this, if you miss church, <laughs> If you miss gathering together and praising, you need to take a moment to praise at home. That's all I can tell you. As I've been preparing. Amen. Amen. I, 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 I feel it moving. Yeah. Bless his holy name. Let us pray before we get into our lesson. Father, I just thank you right now for who you are, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing, oh God. I thank you for your word today, God. I thank you for your preparation, oh God. Father, I thank you for downloading in me what I needed tonight, oh God. Father, I pray right now for each and every person that's on the line, that's coming on the line, God. Father, I pray that the word touch their heart. I pray that it gets down on the inside, oh God. Father, I pray that it fall upon good ground and bear much fruit in its season, God. Father, I pray right now, Father, that you begin to move in the lives of your men, oh God. Father, I lift every man up before you right now, God. Father, let every sin, every iniquity be blotted out right now in the name of Jesus. Let the blood wash right now, God. Father, because let your righteousness, the righteousness of Christ, shine through tonight, oh God. Father, as we prepare our minds, oh God, and we prepare our hearts to receive from you, God. Father, as we prepare to come home to be with you, God, uh, as we prepare for the returning of Jesus Christ, Lord. Uh, Father, we need you right now, God. Father, we need you right now, God. Uh, I feel like Gideon, oh God, uh, in the threshing place, oh God. In the wine press, threshing wheat, oh God. Uh, where is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Uh, where is the God that do miracles? Uh, where? I'm feeling you, Lord. I need you right now. I need you right now. Father, we need you in this justice system, oh God. This justice system is off, God. It is treating us horribly, God. And Father, we need a savior. We need a deliverer, oh God. And so, Father, we bless you tonight. We love you tonight, God. We calling on you, God. We making our petitions known, oh God. Not only have they came after our men, oh God, and got us locked up by the hundreds of thousands, oh God. But, Father, they are chasing after our women now. Huh? Father, we need you right now, Lord. Huh? We need you, God. In the name of Jesus. Woo! Oh, God, we thank you tonight. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Come on, man, and we're going to get started in our Bible study. And I just want to um, uh, just, you know, I'm just getting in that place, you know, that place of worship tonight. And I just thank God for what he's doing and what he has done. Hey, Melissa, hey, how you doing? Glad you could join us. Um, we're dealing with righteousness. I've been I've been in righteousness for a while, and I, I'm I'm still there because we don't. I, I don't think the church put enough emphasis on why we must be walk in righteousness. We we depend on the mercies of God instead of the righteousness of God. See, when you depend on the mercies of God, that means, guess what? I'm not trying to live right. I'm not doing, most people are not living holy. They're living in sin, and therefore, they're not 
they not privy to the righteousness of God or to the things that God promised because they know they living in sin. Hmm. Let's get into that. Uh, let's talk about it. Maybe if you haven't known, there's been a shift where the Lord has been maturing his church in this season. And many of the body of Christ is missing it. Many of us, okay? If, if, I, if I could just take you back in history a little bit, at the turn of the century in the 1900s, in the 1900s to the 1920s, there was a shift in the church then. The Azusa Street Revival took place. That was in like 1906. The church moved into a greater dimension of the prophetic. <clears throat> they moved into holiness. And so they began to preach holiness in, in the church. And so, so in that holiness, there comes righteousness, okay? But somewhere along the line, because of the word, somewhere it got a little polluted down the line and, and people begin to move into the they begin to understand the the riches of God because they start working in the uh what we call that the uh they call it the prosperity gospel but what you don't understand that's because God is prospering you that don't mean you're living holy that don't mean you're righteous that means you're just adhering to a law that's written and it says if you give it shall be given unto you so it didn't say how you had to be living. That's just a principality of how it works, okay? And so many have started giving and realized the blessings that come in that way, but they have forgot about the righteousness of God, amen? Now, in this dimension that we're in, in this turn of the century, there has been another shift in the church. And I'm saying that many of us have missed it, that shift has been from uh, uh, that shift has been to now he's maturing the church in a more a more mature way. Wait a minute. And Jesus Jesus said he said it in Isaiah the fifty sixth chapter. It reads like this in verse six. It says, "Also the sons of a stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord to be his servants." Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. So God wants us to take hold of his covenant in this season. Verse 7, it says, even them will I bring to my holy mountain. So let me stop right there. God is not excluding anybody who wants to serve him. Okay. Most people want to say it's for the children of Israel, it's the Israelites. No, he said anybody who chooses to serve him. Verse 7, let me get back there again. He said, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. He said, their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called in house of prayer for all people. It is, look what it says. It shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Okay, so he left no one out. He said, verse 8, he said, The Lord God which groweth the, gathereth the outcasts of Israel saith, Yet will I gather others to him besides those that are gathered unto him. So we have to understand something. This gospel is for all who are willing to be willing and obedient to obey this gospel, okay? All who wants to come to the knowledge of Christ, repent and move forward. So in this shifting in this season, God has shifted his house to a house of prayer, amen? He's, he's gathering in the strangers. He's gathering them that keeps the Sabbath. Let me tell you, that is so important that we keep the Sabbath. We want to glance over it and see when they shifted the day to Sunday, they kind of like took, they moved it despite God, saying that they were gods and moved it despite God, but they knew they had to give us a day of rest because the children, without any days off, we, we, we lose our mind and they're uncontrollable. So they gave us the Sabbath, but they gave it on the day they chose to give it to us. But anyway, and I still, I still don't understand us as people who are trying to please God. 
if we're trying to please God, why don't we do what's pleasing to him? Hmm. Uh, we'll get back to that later. But I want to talk about this gathering. He, he gathered everybody. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. During this pandemic, the church has been forced to pray. Mm -hmm. I said it. The church have been forced to pray. Prayer has increased a thousand fold since the doors of the church were shut. Mm -hmm. When they shut the doors last year, they said no more gathering. Prayer was increased a thousand fold. Hey, what up, cuz? I'm glad you dropped in here, man. He said, why prayer? Because if, if the prayer, he said, the righteous cry is what gives I want you to know the righteous cry is what gives heaven access for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, and notice what he said. He says it's the righteous. First Peter 3 and 12, it says this, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Let me, let me, say, this, let me say that again. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open to their to their prayers. See, if I can just walk in righteousness, if I can just stay on the path, I know when I call on my God, <laughs> when I call on the Lord, when I call on Jesus, uh, I know he hears. I know he's looking, I know he sees, and I know if I'm in his will, if I ask anything according to his will, he hears, and I have my petition upon him, uh, uh, upon the throne, okay? He said, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Stop right there. If his face is against them that do evil, why do you think that the music industry that the uh, the television industry, the entertainment industry, period, all of these industries are out to get to, to promote evil things. They're out to promote evil things because they know if I can keep you in evil, doing evil things, that when you call on God, He's not going to answer. He's not going to answer. Let's let's take a look. I want to I want to get to this righteous thing. Let's look at Psalm 70, okay? <coughs> psalm 70. This is a psalm of David in his cry for deliverance. Now, we all know David. He said this, 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 this cry for deliverance. Now, when David cried, this, is the, this was to prove God's glory to those that held David captive, okay? Now, David, they, we know David, King David, he was far from perfect. And we know about his sin with Bathsheba, but his repentance is what we're not paying attention to. See, David had a brokenness before God. His heart, well, he had a contrite heart. And we know that God will not reject a pure heart of repentance, okay? And so we are, what we are going to do, so what are we, what are we doing wrong? What, what, what are we doing wrong here? Uh, I, I, let me ask the question. What is your dispensation to God? What is your disposition to God? What? How are, are you looking at God with a proud look when you have sinned? What are, you, what are you doing when you have sinned? What is your body language to God? What is your disposition to God when you found out you have sinned against him? Not against man. Not against what you want to do, but against God himself. What is the disposition of your heart? Is your heart saying, oh, well, I sin, you know, God will forgive me. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. The disposition of your heart has got to be like David's. David was broken. And you have to be that broken when you find out that you have messed up when you serving God. When you... When you find out you are moving in the opposite will of what God will have you to do, there should be some brokenness in you. Amen? And that's what made David so important in his walk with God. He said, see, our enemy knows if he keeps us in sin that God won't help us. We are dependent. The church, 
this church, the current church, the church that's coming into this new century are, have been dependent on the mercies of God, but we forget where he talked about in the, uh, if we don't heed instruction, when we, we, we disregard what God has said in his word in Proverbs 1. He said, if you disregard my instruction, if you, you don't take reproof to any of my counsel, in Proverbs 126, he said, I will laugh at your calamity. Okay, so we in jail and they laughing at us. We're in jail. They're and even when you go to jail, they still keeping people in sin. They still smuggling drugs in. They still letting uh, men rape other men. And oh, it's just crazy. I you know, same thing in the women prison. They still you still keep you in sin while you in captivity. Why? Because if you call on God, they know He's not going to answer. Because there has not been true repentance on the part of those that have been locked up. And because they continue, continuously, continually, continuously in sin. Ah, let's, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Ah, let's just, I'm just trying to break it down for you. He said, don't you, I want you to know, don't you know God wants to show himself, show himself strong on your behalf? Don't you know God wants to move on your behalf like he did for David? He wants to move so that he can prove to these people that are guarding the prison doors, that are running the court system, that he is still in charge. But he needs the vessels. He needs those that are willing to repent. <laughs> he, he redeemed the children of Israel for when Samson messed up. He brought, he brought his glory back through Samson. I am telling you now, God is looking. He wants to show himself strong, just like he did in, in this psalm that we're about to read. He wants to do it for you. Look at Psalm 70. It says this. He, David is crying out. He's crying out, and he says this. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and confounded that seek after my soul. Let them be turned backward and put to confusion that desired my heart. Man, this is a prayer right here. You have to understand something. If you are in captivity <coughs> and the enemy is coming against you, you need to pray a prayer that God that's going to get through. <clears throat> but I have to go back to 1 Peter 3 and 12. He said, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. There has to be some repentance. There has to be some godly sorrow. There has to be some brokenness. So when you pray that God can hear your prayer, okay? He said, verse 3, let them be turned back for a reward of their shame that say, aha. He's talking about those that are laughing at him. Talking about, oh, we got you now. We got you now. There's nothing you can do. But see, they don't know the God that we serve. Amen. But they don't want you to know the God that you serve. That's calling you by your name. Amen. Let all that seek thee rejoice. He said, God, let all the people that seek you rejoice and be glad in thee. And let such as love thy salvation say continually, continually let God be magnified. <laughs> let God be magnified. Let God be glorified. Let God be glorified in you. Let him be glorified in this place. Let him be glorified in the court system. Let him be magnified in the jail. Let God arise in this place. Woo! Yeah, I understand some. This thing here right here. Yeah, you yeah, understand some. He said, but he said, but verse five. He said, but I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me, O God. Thou art my help. And my deliverer, O oh Lord, make no tarrying. Uh, oh Lord, make no tarrying. He said, Lord, don't waste your time. Don't, 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 don't be slow about this one. I need you. I need you. Now, see, I'm going to tell you something. You had to realize something. 
uh, uh, before I move on, he said, you had to realize something. I want you to see this. He said, but I am poor and needy. He wasn't talking about he was broke. He was talking about he poor, meaning that he was oppressed by others because of the troubles that he was in. He is being oppressed. The troubles are all around him. Don't you know this looks like current day? <laughs> this looks like current day activity. We are oppressed on every side. Yes, trouble all around us. If, if you ain't worried about getting killed by your own brother, you're getting worried about getting killed by the cops. It's oppression everywhere. So he says, God, please hurry, deliver me. Don't, don't tarry on this one. Don't, don't take your time on this one, God. I need you right now. Uh, uh, I, want, I want you to hear what the message Bible says about this. See, this psalm is really short, but it's powerful because it's talking about a cry from a righteous man, okay? You have to understand, David wasn't without sin, but he purposed in his heart to please God. So in his purposing, he always found himself in a place of repentance. He found himself, when he found out he had done wrong, he found himself in a place of brokenness, amen? When you can't walk around and say, oh, well, I sin. Okay, God, you had to do it. No, 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 no. Break it. You got to recognize God as God. He, he looks, when you, when you in sin, that means that's what? You, you, your salvation is in trouble and your uh, eternal life is in, in peril. And you better act like it is and say, God, oh, oh, oh help me. Okay. Look, look what the message Bible says about this. He said, God, he said, God, please hurry to my rescue. God, come quickly to my side. Those who are out to get me, let them fall over themselves. Uh, see, this is the prayer of the righteous. This is God's will for not me, but for your life. You want the enemy that's coming after you to fall over themselves. You want those who relish my downfall, send them down a blind alley. Give them haste, give them a taste of their own medicine. Those that gossip off clucking their tongue. God, let them eat the fruit of their own lips. You see what I'm saying? This brother is letting, he, and God is hearing these because what? It is the prayer. His God's eyes are over the righteous. His ears are open unto their prayers. And soon as he hears, just like he heard Daniel's prayer, the angels are dispatched immediately. Amen. They dispatched on your behalf. They, what they doing? They coming to fulfill the word. He said, let those on the hunt for you sing. He said, let those that hunt for you, God. Let them sing and celebrate. Let all who love you saving, saving way say over and over, God is mighty. He said, let them say it over. God is mighty. Who is mighty? God is mighty. You got to, you got to proclaim this thing and let God know how you feel about him. Amen. He said, they tell him and he said, verse five, but I lost it. I'm wasted, God, quickly, quickly, quick to my side, quick to my rescue. God, don't lose a minute. See, the Amplified says it like this. Oh, God, come quickly to save me. Oh, Lord, come quickly to help me. Let those be ashamed and humiliated who seek my life. Let them be turned back and humiliated who delight in my hurt. Let them be turned back because of their shame and disgrace who are laughing, who say, aha, this brother was praying to God about what was happening to him. And he wanted, he wanted God to move on his behalf. But the only way God was moving, he was moving because of what? Righteousness. He was moving. He was moving because of righteousness. He wasn't moving uh, because of David, because it was just David. He was moving because of, uh, uh, um, of righteousness. You know, he said, oh, the, see, we have to understand who we are. Let me let me get on back here. See, so, David was crying out in Psalm 71. It goes on to say, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. He said, deliver me in who? In thy righteousness. 
We got to depend on God. He said, deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thy ear unto me and save me. Be thou my strong habitation whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given me, given commandment to save me for thou art my rock and my fortress. Don't you know God will give the commandment to save you when you are walking up right before him? He will give the commandment because what? His ear, his ear is open to the righteous. His eyes are upon the righteous and he hears when they cry, okay? There is some things about being righteous. Now, you have to understand something. When God told us to put on the whole armor of God, he told us to, guess what? Put on that helmet of salvation. Why? To keep your mind stayed on him. To block out all the interference that the world could be bringing into you. All this stuff that come into your eye gates and into your ear gates. Block it out. Because if you got the helmet of salvation on, you got the belt of truth locked around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness is on. And then you have, guess what? Your feet are shod with the truth of this gospel and you have the weapon, which is the sword of the spirit. What is your weapon? He said, God, please hurry and rescue me. Come quickly. Those who are out to get me, let them fall, okay, over themselves. That is the weapon. The weapon of your warfare is prayer. That's why he has moved the church. He has moved the church from a disposition of praise, a disposition of of shouting, look, time out. I love it. He loves it. He loves it. But he, what he wants most of all, he wants a pure heart of prayer to come up before him. He wants the incense to come up from the altar, the smoke to come up from the altar before him so that he can smell a sweet smelling savor, so that he can hear the prayers of the righteous, that they, when they cry out, he can hear and he can respond. He can send his angels, uh, dispatch him on your behalf. (laughs) All you have to do is walk righteous before him. Well, you're saying, Pastor, I'm not walking right before him. Well, it's time for you to walk right before him. All you have to do is repent and call on his name. Lord, forgive me. I have sinned against you and this. I sinned against you in heaven, God. I need you, Lord, to come in and wash me. Lord, I find myself in captivity because of my sin. But God, I cry out to you. God, I know your word. Let them not take me, oh God. Let them that come after me be in confusion. Why well, you got to have a sword? Woo! You got to be in that place with him. You got to be in that place where you can call on him. And then you don't understand where the righteous cry. All it takes is a broken heart and a contrite spirit. All it takes is an effort to walk right before him. All it takes is for you to give your life to him. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. The Lord wants to show himself strong on your behalf. He wants to show himself strong on your behalf. But he needs you. He needs you. He needs you. He needs you to walk up right before him. He needs you to be intentional in walking in this gospel with him. And so I just thank God tonight. I just that's that's the word for tonight. Be dependent on the righteousness, on the God's righteousness and not his mercies. I mean, we want to be dependent on his mercies. We've been sinning too long, church. It's time for us to put that sin down. It's time for us to put, well, I know, well, look, you can tell a tree by its fruit. After you see the fruit on the tree, look, it's not about him. It's about you and your relationship with God. That's all. The righteousness of God. Let it be a part of your life. Let him be a part of who you are. Amen. Walk in righteousness for his name's sake. For his name's sake. I don't know about y'all, but I don't know about you, but you know the blood. It's all about the blood for me. 
It's all about the blood for me because God, God has he's been so good to us. He's been so good to us. And we have to be back in that place for him. Let's get to a place where we can let the blood wash. Don't let the blood of Jesus go for not in your life. Don't let it just be he spilled his blood and, and, and you don't take part of it. He did it for you. He did it for me. It's a gift. We accept it and we cleanse it. God knows this flesh in this flesh dwelleth no good thing. He knows this flesh. He know you have to bring it under subjection. But he wants, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can be, you can walk in the Spirit. And you can fulfill the commandments of his law. So I'm telling you, walk in the righteousness of God. And I just want to, I just want to pray right now. Father, I just thank you right now for your children. I thank you for those that listen and those that have watched, oh God. Father, I pray that right now there be a great repentance. Oh God, come from the heart's cry of your people, oh God. I pray that there is a great repentance, God. A great cry of repentance, oh Lord. Father, that your righteousness may fall upon your people, oh God. Father, that your righteousness may fall, oh God. Father, that when they cry out, you hear, oh God. You hear and you are attentive to their prayer, O oh God. You're attentive because the prayers of the righteous availeth much, O oh God. And Father, we just thank you tonight, O oh God. We thank you for your availing to the prayers of the righteous, O oh God. We thank you for giving us the keys, Father, for us to open the door for heaven to be invading earth, O oh God. Let thy will be done, O oh God, in this earth as it is in heaven, O oh God. Father, we know that you hear the prayers of the righteous. You have too many examples. You heard Daniel's prayer, oh God. You heard Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's prayer, oh God. You heard the cry of David, oh God. You heard the cry of Elijah, and he shut up rain for three years, oh God. Father, you hear those that are crying out according to your word, oh God. And Father, we just thank you right now that, Father, this new dispensation, Father, I pray that those of us, oh God, that we get it, God, that we begin to move in a place of maturity, oh God. Maturity in you, God. Not driven by this flesh, oh God, but driven by your spirit. And we just thank you and bless you for it all. In your son Jesus' name, we pray, amen. 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 God bless you. I pray that this word blessed you tonight. Uh, before I go, I want to give a shout out to my cousin, Ernie. <laughs> my cousin, Ernie, got married today. God bless you, brother. God bless you, man. Hey, look, bro. I, look, I never, bro. They told me Ernie got married. I said, Ernie who? <laughs> but Ernie, God bless you, man. May the blessings of the Lord be upon your house. And I just thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, bro. Just keep setting an example, bro. It's never too late to do the will of the Lord. And I just say, bro, you keep doing what you do, bro. God bless you guys, and y'all have a great night. Keep those that are in the court system, in the jail system, keep them lifted up before God. Let him put a hedge of protection around your loved ones. And even those that you know, pray for them. Pray for them. Oh, God, pray for them because they need it. Pray that even the evil can't get into jails no more. Just, just pray for them, okay? God bless you, and y'all have a great night. Amen.